This is the insignia of the Lawrence family. This looks exactly the same, but it is a little bit different. Hello everyone, my name is Island, and with the release of, well, anything, miHoYo tends to give us more questions than answers. So, in this video, I'm super excited to share 5 things that I found very interesting about Eula. Inside the game, this symbol shows up several times throughout our gameplay. The artifacts and the weapons describe a story behind a noble family that ultimately succumbed due to their self-indulgence. Even the weapon ascension materials talk about the rule of Decarabian, mirroring the Lawrence family's downfall thousand years ago. So, what's the difference between this symbol and the one in Eula's idol animation? If we take a closer look, this has an accent at the top of the symbol. Now, with that in mind, if we dive into the story of Eula, we learn that she is currently possessing the Lawrence family's crest, also known as the Glacial Seal, a seal that symbolizes the highest figure of the Lawrence family, which passes down from one seal bearer to the next. Now, obviously, this is something Eula created using her cryo powers. She even breaks it near the end of the animation to symbolize her goal of changing her family's corrupt ideology. The real Lawrence family's crest is actually worn by Eula on her shoulder, the Lawrence insignia with an accent on top of the symbol. From Eula's voice line, she tells us that her bone whistle is a Liwet tradition. The intricacies of how to craft and use this whistle was most likely taught to her by Amber's grandfather. This whistle has the capability of producing different types of sounds, and Eula mimics the sounds of the waves during her battles to give her the nickname Spindrift Knight, or simply Knight of Waves. Now, on a character design perspective, Eula wants to change her family's corrupt ideology to stop the Lawrence family's vengeance that seems to be frozen in time and becoming someone who is free and unbound just like the waves. So why does Eula have a cryovision rather than a hydrovision? In a very simple sense, the cryovision is given by the gods to individuals who exhibit a sense of internal conflict. Basically, characters who are stuck between a rock and a hard place. If we take a step back and look at the current roster who holds the cryovision, this concept of inner conflict and being in a weird situation becomes really apparent. Kaya is stuck between Mondstadt and Kanria. Gan Yu is conflicted with her identity between a human and an adepti. Diona wants to ruin the wine industry, but to do so, her job entails doing something she hates, being a bartender. Chi Chi, a character stuck between life and death. Rosaria, working to protect Masta as a sister, but despises her position and the church duties. Chung Yun is constantly struggling with his physiology condition. And of course, Yula carrying the Lawrence family's name and struggling to make amends in Mondstadt. On a simple character design perspective, Eula's cryovision might not make too much sense. But on the story's perspective of the game, we are given another hint that might explain the backstory of visions in the future of the game. Having assumed that a character in an anime setting isn't something new. Nowadays, because it's so common, it would almost be weird not to have one in an anime game. But in Eula's case, this trait is something that has developed unintentionally over time. When Eula first arrived to Mondstadt, due to the stigma around her Lawrence name, she had to harden herself mentally. But in the beginning, she had no sense of guidance or direction. During her process of becoming one of the Knights of Favonius, she met a friend and a teacher. Amber and Amber's grandfather. Essentially, Amber's grandfather taught Eula how to carry herself as an outsider and how to brush off hostile remarks. Eula would learn to simply warn them saying, I will remember this, as a defense mechanism, an instinctive reaction to ignore these remarks and to avoid unnecessary confrontations. Now the funny part is, due to Eula's accomplishments and with the help of Amber, people started to accept Eula and became used to her. They realized that what she said isn't really what she meant. So over time, the phrase, I will remember this, which was used in the past as a confrontation avoidance mechanism, evolved into a literal tsundere indication signal. This particularly hilarious evolution is even annotated in the story of Eula's signature dish, the Stormcrest Pie. The story behind the pie states, 
its body and intensity likely unmatched by anyone else in Mondstadt. Best not to tell her that though, lest she remembers it. From the official source, we are told that Yula is connected to Yenfei in some way. On the surface, the story is actually quite simple. Yenfei was on the job, got attacked by the Abyss Order, and Yula coincidentally saved her and becomes acquainted with Yenfei. Now what's interesting about this story is not about what happened, but where it happened. Yula saves Yenfei at a location called the Dornman Port. So what? Or where is Dormant Port? Throughout the whole game, this location was mentioned only once before by this guy during the quest Time and Wind. Now it was hinted that at Dormant Port, you can charter boats. Regardless, the exact location of Dormant Port can be deduced to two possible locations using the context in Yula's encounter with Yenfei. One would be somewhere in Liwei due to Yenfei's origin of work, or the other is somewhere in Mondstadt as Yula's reconnaissance company operates near the shore. Now, personally, I'm not too interested in its location right now, but the name is something I found particularly interesting. In the English translation, all I could gather was that Dornman sounded like a person's name, but I couldn't make anything of it, so I dove into the Chinese text in the game. Dormen port derives from the term Jingfu Gang. Gang meaning port and Jingfu which was translated into Dornman. Obviously, I don't know who Dormen is or if this person will ever show up in the game. But the name Jingfu does appear in Chinese literature called The Stones of the Wall by Daiho Ying. Long story short, the book is about a woman and her husband separating to different political factions, resulting in one side being exiled to the countryside to reform through labor. Many years later, the husband returns to ask for forgiveness for leaving her and abandoning his moral beliefs. Then enters Jing Fu, a third party who always loved the woman because she never turned her back on her ideals. Now how does this relate to Yula and her story? There is one person in the game that fits this bill perfectly. Yula is on a mission to find someone, as mentioned in her voice line and her backstory. If you've been following me throughout this video, I'm sure you know who I'm going to say, Amber's grandfather. Amber's grandpa was originally from Liyue. And from Amber's story, her grandfather was involved in a monster attack during one of his job and was saved by a doctor from the Knights of Favonius, leaving everyone else in his group dead. Now out of shame and to repay his debt to the doctor, he ends up joining the Knights, forming the Outrider Company, and even ends up getting married to have a granddaughter. Then one day, without a word, disappears. Now what are the reasons that I believe Eula is looking for Amber's grandpa? As I mentioned previously, the story in the book Stones of the Wall literally mirrors the backstory of Amber's grandpa. In one of the messages written on the bulletin board in Chingsu village, it mentions a person seeing an old friend that returned after 50 years flying with his wind glider. And it was also rumored that this old friend previously ended up in Mastad and became a knight. But if this is in fact Amber's grandpa, why did he come to Chingsu village? To ask for forgiveness from Granny Roshin. Granny Roshin once made a promise with a man. But that man never returned. Now, Faner Yi, this guy in Liyue, who's a friend of the grandma, always had feelings for her. But he never confessed his feelings because she was with another man. So to put everything into perspective, using the symbolisms from the book, Granny Ryushin represents the woman, Amber's grandpa represents the husband, and Faner Yi represents Jing Fu. Due to circumstances, Amber's grandpa leaves Granny Ryoshin and works as a knight in a foreign land to reform through labor. Now many years later, Amber's grandpa meets Yula and teaches her how to carry herself as an outsider and how to face her true self for her goals and beliefs. Ironically, the very thing that Amber's grandpa neglected all these years. And one day, Amber's grandpa disappears without a trace, now found loitering around Chingsu village to ask for forgiveness. So, 
is the inclusion of the name Dormin from Yula and Yenfei's encounter purely coincidental? Dormin being translated from the name Jingfu, mirroring the story of a certain person that Yula's looking for? Speaking of Yenfei, there's one more thing that confuses the hell out of me. If Mihoyo goes into this much detail for character development, why does Yula's hairband have the same design as Yenfei's pants? Am I giving Mihoyo too much credit, or is there something more behind Yula and Yenfei's story? For now, I have no clue. But if you're interested in Yenfei, then click on your screen right now where I talk about 5 interesting things about Yenfei. And I'll see you next time.